Imagine a world where your phone works everywhere. No dead zones, no towers, just seamless internet from space. That's the promise of AST Spacemobile, a company aiming to revolutionize cellular connectivity. But how does it stack up against SpaceX's Starlink, the satellite internet giant? In this video, we'll dive into AST's mission, compare it to Starlink's direct-to-sell service, and predict its financial future by 2030. Stick around, this could change how you think about your phone. What is AST Spacemobile? AST Spacemobile isn't your typical satellite company. Launched in 2017, it's building a space-based cellular network to connect standard smartphones, your iPhone, your Galaxy directly to satellites, no extra gear needed. How? Massive satellites with huge antennas as 700-square-foot bluebirds act as cell towers in orbit, beaming 4G and 5G signals to Earth. As of March 2025, AST has five satellites up, with plans for 45 by 2027 for U.S. coverage and 168 by 2030 for the world. They've already made history. The first space-to-phone call in 2023 and 14 megabit per second 5G in 2024. Partnered with giants like AT&T, Verizon, and Vodafone, AST targets 2.8 billion subscribers. The goal? Eliminate dead zones as 70% of Earth lacks cell coverage and bring broadband to everyone, from rural farmers to ocean sailors. AST Space Mobile vs. Starlink. The comparison. Now, let's pit AST against Starlink's direct-to-cell service. Both want to connect your phone from space, but their approaches differ. Advantages of AST Space Mobile. True cellular focus, AST is built for broadband, voice, texting, video streaming right to your phone. Starlink started with home internet via dishes and its phone service is newer and less optimized. Massive antennas. AST's satellites have antennas up to 220 square meters. Future designs, dwarfing Starlink's 25 square meter ones, meaning higher speeds, like that 14 megabits per second demo. MNO partnerships. With 40 plus mobile operators, AST taps into existing cellular networks and spectrum, making it seamless for users. Starlink has fewer partners, like T Mobile. Disadvantages of AST. Slower rollout. AST has five satellites now. Starlink has over 240 direct to sell satellites and launches dozens monthly with Falcon 9. AST's bigger satellites take longer to build. Funding crunch. AST needs billions to scale 2 to $3 billion more while SpaceX's deep pockets and revenue from Starlink broadband give it an edge. Advantages of Starlink Scale With 6,000-plus satellites total, Starlink's constellation is massive. It could hit 300 direct-to-sell satellites by late 2025, outpacing AST's coverage. Speed to market Starlink's texting service with T-Mobile launches in 2025, while AST's full commercial rollout is still testing. Disadvantages of Starlink Lower bandwidth Starlink's smaller antennas limited to 2 to 4 megabits per second per zone initially, great for texting, less so for streaming. AST aims higher. Less cellular integration. Starlink's a broadband-first system adapting to phones, not a native cellular play like AST. In short, AST is the broadband cellular champ with slower scaling. Starlink's the fast-moving giant with less phone focus. Most likely financial scenario by 2030. So, what happens if AST succeeds? Let's forecast its most likely financial outcome by March 2030. Based on current progress, here's the realistic scenario. Moderate success. The plan. AST launches 95 to 110 satellites by 2030 enough for US and partial global coverage, not the full 168 yet. It grabs 125 million subscribers from its 2.8 billion potential pool, focusing on rural and developing regions. Revenue hits $9.3 billion annually. $9 billion from users at $6 per month, plus $300 million from government deals. Profitability. With a 70% margin typical for satellite networks once scaled AST earns $6.5 billion in EBITDA. Cash flow turns positive by 2027 with 45 satellites. Market cap. At a 15x EBITDA multiple. Standard for telecom growth stocks, AST's market cap reaches $97.5 billion say $80 to $110 billion accounting for risks. That's a 10x-14x jump from today's $8 billion, making it a major player, though not a trillion-dollar titan. Why this is likely? Five satellites work now. Scaling to 95 is ambitious but doable with $500 million from partners and more funding. Starlink competes, but AST's broadband niche and m and ties hold strong. Urban towers stick around, capping growth, but rural adoption soars. Risks like launch delays or funding gaps could drag it to $50 billion, 
while a perfect run could push it past $200 billion. But $80 to $110 billion feels right, a solid win without overreaching. Conclusion AST Space Mobile could redefine connectivity, turning dead zones into hotspots with space based cellular magic. Compared to Starlink, it's the broadband dreamer to SpaceX's fast scaling pragmatist, each with strengths and hurdles. By 2030, a $100 billion market cap is a realistic prize if AST nails its launches and partnerships. Will it replace towers? Not fully, think hybrid. Satellites for the wild, towers for cities. But it's a game changer either way. What do you think? AST or Starlink? Drop your thoughts below. Hit like if this sparked your curiosity. And subscribe for more tech deep dives. Thanks for watching. See you in orbit.